Hi, I'm James Chirillo, and I'm going to talk now about uh, acoustic versus electric rhythm playing in a big band. Now, my electric here, same basic kind of guitar, except this pickup, I've got one pickup on this thing, and as you can see, it's, it's actually mounted by that little rod hooked onto the side of the fingerboard up there. So it's a free-floating pickup. It's not impeding the resonance of the wood in any way. That's, that's the sound I like. And most other electric guitars, uh, even arch tops like this, will have one or two pickups with the hole drilled through the soundboard and the pickup mounted right, th right there. So that, of course, takes out about 75% of the acoustic sound and projection of the instrument, the natural acoustic projection. So I've always preferred this one way or another, even when I have to plug it in. So, that being said, this has got nickel wound strings, regular electric strings versus the bronze on the acoustic. And I've got these strings a lot lower. This is, well, it's less than half of what that is, that's for sure. Because with that lower string, then, is a lot less tension. Now you get less natural acoustic projection, but you can get around the instrument without basically crushing golf balls all day like you are when you're playing this thing. So, since our function is still the same, we're trying to play a tenor harmony line to the bass player's bass line, and uh, we're still playing this music from the 30s, 40s, 50s, Basie, Duke, Blunsford, uh, Benny Goodman, Charlie Barnett, all those guys. It still was the music of the day. It was music for dancing. The guitar player's function is still the same. And what you need to do, first of all, I always like playing with a tube amplifier. You don't even need anything this big, really. A Fender Deluxe would do. Anything with tubes, for me, that's always what gives you a, a more natural uh, sound on the guitar. Uh, so what I like to do is, I'll turn, this, I'll turn the guitar up all the way. When I first plug this thing into the amp, I'll turn the I'll get the volume where and the and the basic quality of the tone with the bass. I usually turn the bass up a little. The middle not quite as much. Actually on this amp they're about the same today. That's what it sounds like to me today. And the treble. Yeah, the treble. All three are up just a little bit. Most amps today they're active electronics which means as soon as you start to turn the bass and treble and middle knobs up, that really boosts quite a bit of volume all over. So turn those up a bit, get a good quality of tone, and then get that volume up where with the guitar full open, you're about as loud as a horn player playing at, say, a solid mezzo forte to forte. If you got to be much louder than that, somebody else in the band is playing too loud. So that would be more like your full blast solo volume, but the still, it should only be as loud as a horn player playing. Okay. So for me right now, that's about where it's at. We have no horn players in the room. I won't have too much of a problem there. <laughs> but playing rhythm now, this is, our, this is our primary role. You gotta turn this thing down quite a bit. So you get roughly the volume of sound that was coming out of this thing. You're not going to get the projection. The only people, you're going to have this thing down probably so much, you'll hear it. Maybe the guys next to you a bit. People out in the room, in the line with the speaker, they'll hear it a bit. But, pardon me, in that we don't have natu as much natural acoustic projection on the electric guitar versus the acoustic guitar. Uh, you really won't be uh, 
Uh, you really won't be heard so much either by the guys in the band uh, or some of the people out in the room off to the sides or whatever. This thing will project everywhere in the room. This only projects straight forward from the speaker of your amplifier. And if you have it so loud or turn it up to the point where people over there, guys, baritone player on the other side of the band can hear you playing rhythm, you're definitely too loud. So it's got to, rhythm guitar's got to be soft when you're putting it through the amp. Uh, a good check would be it's got to be underneath the level of the bass, it's got to be underneath the level of the piano. No matter how soft the piano player's playing, it's got to be softer than him. Uh, other than that, our function is still exactly the same. So, blues and F, it's exactly the same. Exactly the same. You heard I, I was mostly on one string. I threw a couple of uh, two string chords in there, the third and the fourth strings. It's the exact same role. Uh, if you play a more modern based arrangement where it's not so much music for dancing like the older swing bands were playing, uh, you can think. Think back to uh, some of the things like Herb Ellis and Barney Kessel would do with Oscar Peterson. Uh, those guys were both playing rhythm with Oscar and Ray Brown and Al Harewood, where he was playing drums, and uh, they were playing it on electric. They had that thing down real soft, just like we're talking. But they would also play, mainly because it's an electric guitar now, we're working with the amp. You could play at just uh, like we talked about before, those drop three voicings, we have those three adjacent strings, and then we skip a bit, skip the note, then we got our bass, skip a string, then we have our bass note. You can play those chords on the, uh, you can play a three note chord, those three strings, top three strings of that drop three. Or work with maybe some of the forms of the drop twos like we just talked about, also in that first segment. So, Say a blues and F, uh, switching between drop twos, there's like an F9 chord. And then B flat 9, B flat 7, these are all drop twos. B flat 7, it's like the top, those are the top three strings of that drop three. So I'll play a chorus of blues, rhythm but working with those chords, which would be a lot lighter feel. You're not giving the band that quarter note support as much because you're playing with the lighter tone of those upper strings. So it's not, it's not doing the exact same role as this, but we're still playing quarter notes and we're still doing, basically functioning as that harmony line with a couple of added notes underneath the level of the piano. We're going to play a chorus of blues, with the four note chords, drop twos on the top, four strings, and also on the middle four strings, maybe a little. See how I feel like today. And some of those three note parts of the drop three voicing in the middle. Blues and F, one, two, come on. <laughs> So right there, I was, I was basically all on those inside three strings. My basic notes are still the same. Once in a while you throw in a ninth. It all depends, like the sound that you're hearing, feeling at the moment. Somebody soloing, you hear that note right there, that's the note to put in your chord or leave it out completely. So it's always a matter of when you're playing rhythm, when you're playing in the rhythm section, period. The best thing to do, when you're, you're looking at an arrangement, you've got maybe three or four bars, whatever it is, of one chord, you don't need to keep looking at the page. 
<laughs> keep your head up, keep your ears open, listen to what's going on around you, and play. So when somebody, some soloist does something a little bit different, you're right in there with him. So it's, it's very important for rhythm section players not to keep their heads buried in the music. It's, uh, with a lot of the older tunes that we play, the chord progressions are consistent. We have a chorus, another chorus, the chords are the same between the two. So you play one or two choruses, you probably should know the tune by then, at least the sound of it. So you only have to really reference that music so often. You see four bars of slash marks and one chord at the beginning, you don't need to look at that page for that full four bars. Uh, you know, it's B-flat-7 or whatever it is, and use your ear. Another thing I'd always say to any student that studies with me is study solfege, uh, because what that does is it sensitizes your ear to how notes function in a key. So anytime you, once you set up a key center, your ears will be like radar. When anybody plays a note that's either out of the chord or they, maybe the piano player plays a different chord, some substitution for what normally would go in whatever tune you're playing. And if you get your, solfege will give that to you. That's the point. And for me, I don't have perfect pitch. I've got relative pitch. I studied movable dough. People, people with perfect pitch, it's, it's better for them to study fixed dough. But movable dough, that certainly worked for me. And it just makes things, I don't even have to think about it anymore. You hear a different note than what was normally in that chord at that point in time, it's, you know what it is before you even know what it is. <laughs> so, so facial will do that for you.